Thank you so much. Here we, here we had an example of how he quoted the, you quoted once and again the former speaker, but you opposed her <laughs> almost all along. Uh, and indeed, let us say, open the floor for questions, because there are questions here indeed. Um, perhaps we'll take a first round, and I would only uh, start by saying that, uh, or, or by pointing at the at some points of uh, difference between uh, our two uh, speakers. For instance, Dr. Pinto said that Jewish presence is crucial, is crucial for the Europeans, and you repeated it uh, uh, twice, I think, um, while uh, Dr. Maimon said that um, demographically it's insignificant, that of course, a uh, million and a half, but um, Jewish presence should find a way to make its voice heard among intellectuals. And it, right now, it has a more of a symbolic value than a real presence politically and e economically. So this is uh, one example of how, f how the, our two speakers um, differ. Um, and I, I would like... Um, I, I would like to ask both of you to elaborate on that and to see whether you, you really deeply differ. But first, let's have some more questions, and then we'll have uh, the two of you, with your permission, uh, answer. Rafi, Dr. Rafi Vago, uh, he's an expert on um, post-communist Europe, especially on uh, Eastern South Europe. Please. Thank you very much. I enjoyed very much your lecture, and I even had the pleasure to quote to you one of your articles in a publication by the Romanian F Jewish Federation on the future of European Jewry, but it was translated into Romanian, so it will not be of much help, but the quotation from you is there. I have three uh, brief questions and which are remarks which will try be questions. At one point, you identified by giving the example of Mr. Cantor, who is live, has a house in Geneva, as in Russian, and he has also a house in Herzliya Pituach, as far as I know, that he's not completely European because he, he lives in two countries which are not part of the European Union. Then the question becomes, if we identify or we identify in our discourse now, Europe with the EU. And of course, if, you, if your answer will be that Russia, of course, is Europe, and Switzerland even more than Europe, that is a matter of argument, it doesn't solve our dilemma. But do you really identify, for our purposes at the moment, e e Europe as equal as the EU, or for that matter, Russian Jews or Macedonian Jews or Swiss Jews are not part of Europe because they are not part of the EU? The second one, is you mentioned why go down to Bratislava when you could go up to Vienna. I'm adding going up to Vienna. Uh, or maybe, yes. uh, the question is, or, or rather the, also the remark, do you see the possibility that in Europe we see some sub-regional Jewish identities, namely in what I would call East European, Central European identity, and judging from what a pattern that I have observed without having any statistical, uh, empirical uh, 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 evidence here, that there are all kind of meetings between local Jewish leaders discussing the specific issues linked also to restitution, compensation, anti-Semitism, the fate of Jewish communities, the future of Jewish communities in this sub-region, not of the Western Europe, of the Brits and the French, as you said, but rather uh, Bratislava, Poland, uh, Slovakia, Poland, Romania, etc., etc. My third remark or question is that we should also think how the European leaders see the Jewish identities of Europe from a political perspective. And what I have in mind is mm -hmm. that less than two months ago, the Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban, has met with Mr. Moshe Kantor, the President of the European Jewish Congress, in trying to reassure him, don't worry too much about our anti-Semitism in uh, Hungary. You European Jews shouldn't worry about it too much. Now, if Orban, who is also the Hungary the President Chairman until the end of the month, or, the, or ending today, or the end of this month, a Chairman of the EU Commission 
we can ask ourselves why would bother the Prime Minister of a European country to meet the President of the European Jewish uh, Congress unless he sees a kind of Jewish power for our purposes now, a Jewish identity that you can deal with. Mm -hmm. Even if those leaders are not exactly elected or self-selected as you have uh, uh, hinted. Thank you. A Jewish organization. Jewish yeah, and, yes. and this is, if I may, may add to that remark, this, this is just one example indeed, but uh, the European Jewish Congress goes around, go, goes around reacting and asking and asking for protection of Jews and the uh, meeting with top leaders. Would you please introduce yourself? My <coughs> Sorry. Uh, my name is Michael Seuss and... Uh, He's also a professor in Tel Aviv University. Uh, I, uh, I call myself in Israel uh, an Israeli-American Asiat. <laughs> in America, I'm, I'm an I'm Asiatic European, no, no, sorry. Uh, my roots are in, in Germany, my, but I grew up in Israel from very, very small age. Grew up here, studied here, then I went to work internationally in Africa, and then I lived many years in the U.S. studying, working, and eventually uh, one of the UN organizations asked me to join the European office just became famous today again, the World Health Organization, with a cellular. And I don't have a cellular, just for your information, because I <laughs> found that, what they just said today, I did it years ago. Um, so I lived uh, 25 years in Copenhagen as a residence. So I'm, I feel as a citizen of the world, in a way. But I don't think there are most people, unless they are really bureaucrats, as uh, Dr. Maimon said, there are no Europeans because the French are French and the British are British and the Danes are Danes, maybe a little Scandinavian, that's, that even that is not clear. And when all of the European non-Jewish population will feel European, then you will have also European Jews. Uh, that is... Uh, um, in contrast to the United States, which is a federation of uh, 50 uh, states, but with a common background, common history, common language. So there, it's much more easy to be continent-wise, American continent-wise, uh, uh, American Jew, mm -hmm. or even Canadian, although the Canadians don't like to be uh, recognized too much with America. So I uh, just wonder how you look at that. Thank you. Yeah. Yossi, do you want to say something about Trigano? Yossi, do you want to say something about Trigano? My name is Magdalena. I'm studying here for year at Tel Aviv University. And I want to ask you if you could explain the role of uh, Russian immigrants to Europe, or is this only the case on Jewish communities in Germany? If they play a role in like shaping this identity, a European or a Jewish one, because like we know like the, the com Jewish communities grow in Germany, although they are not religious sometimes, if this has an impact at all, on only on Germany, also maybe on other European countries. Mm -hmm. You now echoed, I don't know what they thought about it, but you echoed something that Dr. Maimon said uh, about religious uh, Jews and others who are secular, etc., and then their identity is lacking. Or because you said now they are not religious. Yeah? But I think they may be shifting also the Jewish they might. identity. Well, religious identity is not the only one. <laughs> Ma, uh, okay. please. My name is Barbara Slapkin. I'm a member of Friends of Tel Aviv University. And this isn't about Jews in Europe, but it's about something uh, Dr. Maimon said. You talked about the problems of circumcision and shechita. And what about problems? Uh, the Muslims also circumcise, and they have halal meat. Are the, is there an outcry against this? And, against the Muslim community, and what are they doing about it? Mm -hmm. And do the Jews have some common cause here with the Muslims? Yes. 
Ja. I'm wondering if there is a possibility to create a collective Jewish European identity. Because you can speak about, of course. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't introduce. It's Professor oh, yeah, Yossi Gorni. We know Gorni. each other. Okay. I will not tell you how many years. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Maimon, you know him? Okay. So, uh, is there a possibility for a collective Jew Jew European Jewish identity? Because uh, we have two collective Jewish identities now. Uh, Israeli one, with the language, with the land, etc. And the American, Jewish, the American Jewish identity. Again, a language, a state, a culture, etc. Now we have this kind of a Euro the European center more than 20 countries, that means 20 languages and cultures, and the Jews living almost in every one of, the, of those countries. Mm -hmm. There are 45 communities. So, so, and the Jews, we cannot say that the, what is uh, uh, um, important for the Jews, what is significant for the Jews, is the religion. Because in Europe, um, uh, let me say, I not endanger myself, but most of the Jews are secular. They are, they are not religious. Yeah, you spoke about 50,000. They are affiliated with communities. Pardon? They are affiliated with generally... No, no, community, this is, a, this, no. is a, this, is a, this is something different. So, <laughs> What is the common denominator? What, can, what is, is significant, significant for, for the Jews in, in Europe? What will, be, uh, is a, 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 will, be, a, will enable them to be some kind of a collective, of a group? I cannot speak of, of, of the uh, um, negative thing. I, I agree with you, anti-Semitism as an open, open movement and, and an open mood is, is, not, uh, is, is not relevant anymore. There's no, 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 no uh, anti-Semitism of, of governments, and no, no anti-Semitic policy. There's an anti-Semitic mood, uh, et cetera. So what is, what is, what is the collective uh, spirit of the Jews? And, and I, I think that Diana said. Culture. One, the negative is the, the memory of the Holocaust, and we are fighting to be unique in, in this aspect. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the other is uh, Israel, not uh, as, well, only as a Jewish state, uh, but uh, as a state with problems. <laughs> so we are the problematic person of the Jewish people. So like in, 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 in a family, you have a, problem, a problematic person or a problematic child, and everyone is uh, concerned about it. So, but, this, but this is the collective Jewish identity. This is it. I don't see a future for the, uh, for the European Jewish collective entity without those two predominant. Mm -hmm. this, because culturally it is impossible so I am optimistic and pessimistic at the same time so please the floor is open for answers would you like to stand uh, no, yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. I will, um... <laughs> well, the first three questions were really bullseye. I mean, absolutely to the point. Do you hear me? Yeah. For the first three questions. Um, I mean, you only underscored my notion of Europe being a word that implies so many different realities. And what strikes me is that in the Israeli case, very often 
those who are most interested about Europe are interested structurally with the European Union. After all, Israel has a very, very important relationship with the European Union institutions, whether it's scientific, professional, trade, commerce, that particular entity of the EU is not something to relativize. So from that point of view, when many Israelis would think of, you know, the, Euro the Europe, the Europe they're thinking about is not the Europe with Dostoevsky in it, but it's the Europe sitting in Brussels. Uh, from the point of view as a Jew inside Europe, uh, one of the things I associate with the European Jewish identity is being lock, stock, and barrel part of what I call post-war Europe understanding of pluralist democracy, human rights, and a uh, notion of a citizenship open to all. And from that point of view, Switzerland f fulfills itself when it more or less when it doesn't say horrible things in referenda, but Russia, I'm afraid to say, and you forgot to mention, but I spent almost 10 years as an advisor to the political directorate of the Council of Europe on spreading democracy to Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union, and I can't say that it was a resounding success on the Russian front, although I was there when <laughs> Russia was brought into the Council of Europe. But what I will say is that on that line, Russia is not part of my understanding of Europe at all. I would like it to be, and there are definitely European forces inside Russia, but as of today, Russia is not being governed by anything that resembles remotely a European context. Romania is doing much better. Now, from that point of view, you have to, you know, where you, can't, you can have Europe used right and left all the time, but somewhere one has to have some kind of a definition. And what struck me was that in the 1990s, when there was much ado and welcoming notion of having a vast European Jewish presence and there was a major conference in 1995 in Prague and the Russians came and there was for the first time people had to find interpreters for Russian which was a what a glorious victory over the time of saving Soviet Jewry of just 15 years before but the Russians themselves kept on saying, we're not European, we want to have our own separate Russian Congress, and we're closer with Kazakhstan and the Philippines, if need be. And that was one of their position as a Jewish, they created their own Russian Jewish Congress. It's interesting to see that an individual would come over, but the Russian Jewish component didn't want to play with small, little, in a sense, irrelevant Europe, which is a very interesting element about the double nature of this identity. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, when we say Europe, we can have different lectures on a given day about different aspects of Europe. Bratislava and uh, the sub-regional <laughs> Jewish identities. I agree with you. Very small Jewish communities, in great part thanks to the joint, to the American Joint Distribution Committee, have been forced to marry each other or live with each other or pretend they love each other because they're so small and they have to connect. And it has been working much better than in the early 90s when if you spoke about the Yugoslav wars you were bound to be almost killed by the Jews from Zagreb who were at war with the Jews from Belgrade and you thought the well no, the Jews are you know beyond such things if only because of the Shoah not at all there was a, a, or the Jews of Thessaloniki with the idea of Macedonia they went crazy over these issues, as I was telling them, a positive European Jewish identity in 97, 98, very nationalist. So there are such things, but what are they getting together about? You said it yourself, anti-Semitism, compensations, that's the past, and you want to be good, have the right lawyers with which to tackle these issues, but are they getting together in any positive way for the future? And consequently, where is this you know, sub-regional identity? It's still a kind of fossilized sub-regional identity. For a while, they even nobly got together for the refurbishing of synagogues. I remember Jews from Thessaloniki giving money to the Bulgarians for the restoration of the great synagogue in um, Sofia. Um, a kind of Hagia Sophia for our own Jewish cause. Um, but anyway, so that's a problem itself. And the third problem, the third issue, when you're right, when Mr. Orban has to go tell somebody that he, they, you know, Jews are fine, that's just populist rhetoric, 
uh, we're talking again about a major push in the Jewish world, of which then the ECJC would have been the closest equivalent at hand to you know, convey the notion that no, 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 don't worry, we're not going on the anti-Semitic road. Um, but he plays with fire because there are genuine anti-Semites out there in Hungary and he wants to keep them in, you know. So that kind of reassurance to that kind of a body only calms very mildly my European democratic pluralist soul because it's not where the action is from that point of view. Um, Yes, maybe there are no Europeans. So I do know that the Danish Jews feel very Danish and have big quibbles with the Swedish Jews. So, I mean, uh, I think the national identity of the Jews is a very important one. Now, I will add something about this, and I should have mentioned it when I spoke, that there is going to be more national identity. After the Shoah turned everybody gray, there's been a kind of, wait a minute, Hold on. And the first person to have said, wait a minute, hold on, was someone whose name is so prestigious and so important that it's not an insignificant thing. Simon Weil, a few years ago, said, ça suffit. We, three quarters of the Jews of France, have been saved by the French. Nine tenths of the Dutch Jews were murdered with the statistics almost equivalent of Poland. So stop it, she said this to the wider Jewish world. I am sick and tired of you having me, having ins everyone insult my France. And in a sense, she set the tone. Now, at a deeper level, and for European reasons, I find what is interesting is that the return to these national Jewish traditions is part of the national, of the Jewish revival Dov was referring to in terms of giving a kind of positive Jewish content. This means that Jews who are interested in Jewish life are increasingly republishing, rereading the national Jewish traditions in their own lands. This is a revolution because they too grew up in the notion that the past before the Shoah, you know, was just a bunch of assimilated, diluted, weak Jews who went to the Auschwitz like lambs to slaughter almost willingly. In other words, that the old German Jewry, the old French Jewry, the old Italian Jewry were full of what you could call false consciousness. There is a very important renewal in the world of history of historical studies to see that the famous Israelites that then were replaced by les Juifs were not that wishy-washy, grotesque, ridiculous bunch of forgotten Jews that had lost their identities. There was a rereading about the great rabbinical traditions, the historical references. So this returning to the national traditions may be a road of to find a deeper content for something that I would call a heavy content-laden Jewish tradition. It may be the first step for a future European Jewish tradition, but it's an important one because it goes against the mantra of post-Holocaust Jewish world, that those Jews, I wouldn't say deserve what they got, but they should have woken up in time, moved to the Yishuv in time, so, so, and so forth. And this return to a rereading of that past is, I think, a crucial element in even planning a future with content, which can be cultural or indeed religious. I am struck by the number of books that are now available, not for just you know, a few academic scholars, but people are reading about the rabbis of the late 19th century because they had an understanding of belonging while remaining Jewish. And this is the way in a kind of a future saying, yes, I belong, I'm staying here, I want to be Jewish, but one has to slowly reconquer an understanding of belonging inside a longer tradition. This is happening in Italy, it's happening in France, it's happening in the UK, and it may slowly one day be happening in Germany, which brings me to your question about the Russian Jews and the impact. The post-war German community was, of course, made of Poles, and they were there sitting on packed suitcases, and then any notion of you know, belonging to the German Jews was irrelevant to them. They were orthodox and had nothing to do with the modern 19th century and 20th century culture of the German Jews. What we're seeing now slowly happening is a reappropriation by various Jews, the Russians, children of the Polish Jews, 
descendants of the few German Jews that there might have been and other Jews of that great 19th century of Clerung tradition of Judaism with a wider resonance. So that, I mean, I won't go into it here because it's really more history than anything else, but we're seeing a revival of the readings and the writings of the writings of Hermann Cohen, who could not have been more taboo person in the understanding of post-war Jewish identity than Franz Werfel, yes, but Cohen, that stupid, poor Kantian who really thought you could make a kind of synthesis. These syntheses are becoming more interesting as Jews want to remain Jewish and realize that those forefathers were not that diluted Jews after all. So there's a very interesting intellectual content that is moving along right now, and this may be a step. Second reason why this return to national traditions is important is that by doing that, implicitly they're doing two things. They're saying, wait a minute, we're not like Jews and Muslims arriving at the last minute inside Europe. Look at our pedigree. We belong. We help create the better side of these different countries. And when they do that, and understanding that you could be both quintessentially Jewish and proud to be French, the issue of gratitude and patriotism is no longer on the agenda. No one's proud and grateful for having been emancipated, not after the Shoah. But what is being said now is an interesting coming together of saying, look, you can be Jewish and French, Jewish and Italian. And the Jewish community of Italy went through the 150th anniversary of the Risorgimento just recently with very interesting consequences and articles and reflections. And that may be a road for the Muslims to come because one can't say the Muslims are a big group of people that are completely alien. There are many Muslims who are secular, want to assimilate, and want to be proud of a tradition. And that may be a road for them to understand that they in the future can be, maintain a Muslim identity, perhaps with a modernized Muslim Islam that has gone through a kind of Wissenschaft des Judentums. And it's in the making, it's in the making. It will take time, but it is in the making, not just here in little Europe, not here, sorry, in Europe where you might say blach, but in major places like Indonesia, which is much more important. But what is interesting for me is that that plays a role because the Muslims can see that you could be both at a given point. And so it's not just going to the past for the past, but you know, as usual, the past has an element for the future. Uh, so I hope to have, I mean, the Russian role of the, the Russians as immigrants, it's only Germany. There are very, very few Russians who migrated anywhere else because the Germans had the fluchtingly uh, component, uh, con, con, what was it called, contingent, and France was not welcoming Russians of any particular stripe or, or the UK for that matter, for, except for a few musicians or artists. So the real impact of a Russian identity, and there is one because it's bringing this notion of a Russian ethnic identity, and they're fighting it out with some of the younger German Jews who say, no, no, we want to go back to the older German Jewish identity. So these are very creative fights. When I said there's no European Jewish identity, I really do want to stress that you have now increasingly high-level intellectual discussions among the different juries. So maybe you have to get back into the national before you can make the step further. I don't know. But what's important for me is that there is a return to a national debate of identity and belonging. As for the problems that Dov raised of circumcision, she tried and so forth, are they, are they, do the Muslims and the Jews come together? Yes and no. On some counts, yes, and other counts, no. I, from what I understand, the Muslims don't mind if they stun the animal, right? Uh, half, of them. half of them. Well, okay. The older, they don't like Jews. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it is extremely complex. So my major fundamental point would be, and I have written on this, which is to say, Europe is standing on the notion of the rule of law. It doesn't mean that everyone's applying the rule of law, but it means that the rule of law is there, and Europe has a memory, otherwise the Serbs wouldn't have found their old disgruntled monster at the last minute, finally, they probably could have found him before, but the older generations were behind him. The younger ones want to enter Europe, and they were sick and tired of having this weight around their foot, their feet, and so off he went to the Hague yesterday or today. So the point is the rule of law and these values are not a small thing in the European identity. Now, the rule of law is something that has to be taken into account as a minuscule Jewish community. And there, this is a wager, I grant you. 
if the rule of law is so important, the fact that there are 10 times more Muslims in France than Jews does not matter in terms of how the state perceives the Jews. Pessimists will say, well, it will matter how the Socialist Party perceives the Jews because it might get 10 times more Jew voters one day if they're Muslim. But the Muslims are not one group. Why should they be more compact than we as Jews are? We're completely divided as well. So the key question coming along for any European Jewish identity in the future or for any Jewish presence is, do Jews today, from the UK down to Greece, from Portugal up to Lithuania or Estonia, I'm leaving Russia out, as you say. <laughs> uh, do the Jews trust the rule of law and those pillars of post-war Europe? I'm not sure they do. But that, that is the question. To really belong means to say those post-war givens of how Europe was built are so strong that even if I'm only 2,500 people in a given country, I know I have the rule of law and the European institutions behind me. If you don't have that feeling, then there really isn't much of a way. It's sort of like the American Constitution or the American Supreme Court from that point of view. And if you don't believe that, then it weakens even more the position of the Jew in Europe. I am not sure that today there is this massive confidence. And one of the reasons why this massive confidence has been eroded is not for the Jew, me in the street, living in whatever city. It is because of what you call, Joseph, the problem child in the family, which is the Israeli component. And when most Jews react very badly, when Europeans look at Israel and criticize it in the basis of their own understanding of the never again, which is completely different from the Israeli never again, as a matter of fact, is antithetical to the Israeli never again. And so these values that should reinforce a European Jewish identity are the very same values that fragilize it because that European, Jewish ident uh, that European identity and values are not compatible with the very needs of Israel to exist. So you're caught in this bind, which is, I'm sorry to be more political and political theoretical than cultural here, but it's one of the elements also that precludes a clear-cut European Jewish identity of, yes, I'm feeling madly in love with Europe and the post-war values it incarnates. It, one cannot, as a Jew, not while wanting to make sure that Israel is protected, accepted, valued, and not, you know, spat upon or hated. That's another reason for the fragility. So we're dealing here with really cult conceptual divisions rather than demographic and all the other problems that you know even Dove mentioned which exist but even before these things exist there are deeper ones behind <clears throat> thank you um, okay so uh, first I, I will start from the easy question to the more difficult one regarding the halal question so there's a difference because uh, half of the Muslims agree to, to stand the animal before we, so they agree with the uh, with, uh, uh, European law, so it's no problem with that for them. And, uh, and the second half of Muslims, they are more extreme, they are less moderate, and they don't like the Jews, they are not going to make a common uh, fight with the Jews for that, and they don't care about uh, selling the, the, the halal meat only to halal uh, supermarkets. So it's not exactly the, it's not the same situation. I mean, to, 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 non, to regular public services, it's not, it's not the same situation. It's not, and, and this regulation is not going to, to, to have a big problem regarding uh, halal, halal, uh, halal, uh, so halal meat. And it's, it's not going to have a, a big problem. It will be a big problem for the Jews. And it's a, so it's a specifically a Jewish yeah, problem. Halal? Halal, yeah, it's uh, the slaughtering, yeah. The, the, according to, to the Muslim Sharia, the Muslim law. Yeah, but they, they, it's not, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, according to the Muslim Allah Sharia. Yeah. Okay, so, so this, is the, the, this is the point with the halal. And, uh, but the point, most of the people who, 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 who support this kind of law, in fact, they are against the Muslim, not against the Jews. The Jews are just a collateral damage. Yeah? So we have to understand what will happen in Europe it will happen first because of the Muslim, and the Jews will be a collateral damage. Because they, they want to fight the Muslim, they will just, the Jews will be 
<laughs> a collateral damage. So regarding the, the, the immigrants in Germany, uh, it's, it's in, in the making. We cannot know today what would happen. We see that normally about the 200,000 uh, uh, Jewish migrants from, from uh, Eastern Europe who arrived to, to, to Germany, only half of them are registered today in Germany as Jews because they are not so much uh, uh, Jewish in some way. And the, some, and, and the people who keep Jewish is people or there are some religious people who are very few or because they are low level socially excluded and they need the social welfare and they need also the support of the rabbis and the synagogue and you don't, uh, you don't organization to, to support them and so they need this connection to the, to, the, to the community. But the people who are better off, they just not so much connected. But we have a new generation and the new generation you know, first thing you have to do, like in a, you know, with a, with a pyramid, with a pyramid, first you have to have a place in the, in the sun and then to have a, a economic welfare and then you have to think about your identity. It's not the first thing you do when you have a country. The first thing to do is to have a food and to have a standing and then you go for, for identity. So it takes a, a, a small time to, to have, you have a delay. Regarding, uh, the, the very, regarding the difference between Europe and the EU, uh, it's clear that Europe is much bigger than the EU, but what, what we have to understand, the EU is a critical actor regarding the future of Europe and Jewry. And we have to take care of that, how to deal with Europe and, and with the EU, because the EU is the most important critical actor regarding the future of Europe and Jewry. And so we have to be careful about that. Regarding now the, 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 your question about identity, I will say the three anchors of components of Jewish identity is religion, which is not so, not many inter people are interested in religion in Europe. The second thing is Israel. It's not only a problematic child, it's much more than that. In fact, we have to understand that the European Jews are hostages of the foreign policy of Israel. It is a bright child and a problematic as well. Yeah, but I mean, I say that if there is asymmetric relationship and this is very important to understand. The, the French Jews, or the uh, British Jews, or the German Jews, they are hostages of the foreign policy of Israel. When Israel is going to Gaza, suddenly people have, they have to answer to the people in their company when they work, what do you do in Gaza? And so they are not, and they can have any, their voice is not heard in Israel, so they are, they are in, suffering from that. So the people go and say, not in my name. It's much easier to say, I don't want to say nothing regarding Israel. It's not my country, forget about that. And they cannot say, because people tell them, it's your country, whatever you do. And so it's a big problem for them. And so, so people want to escape, and they don't like to be in this situation. This situation is not, it's an asymmetric situation, it's a pathologic situation. We have to find a way to have a, a forum when European and American Jews can speak together with Israeli at the high level and not at this situation we have today and we have to change it. So we have a problem with Israel regarding the Shoah which is, it's not the best, you know, it's not the best positive content we have. I remember a family in Miami that told me, we don't understand who oh, three kids married non-Jews and we spoke to them every day about the Shoah and we don't understand why they marry non-Jews. You see what I mean? So it's not, maybe it's even counterproductive regarding the Jews, regarding the, what we call the, 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 the concurrences, the competition of identity and memory. Yeah, you know that, that when, if you say all the time, it's a kind of guilt, it's a kind of uh, emotional blackmail that Jews do to, to non-Jews, and people don't like that you do them emotional blackmail. So people, to use the Shoah is not clear, but it's, a, it's, it's also an idea of Shmuel Trigano, for example, who support that claim. It's not a good idea to use Shoah all the time, because to use the Joker, you know, I have a Shoah. So and it's not the best way to use, and for sure for the young Jews, they don't like the Shoah so much. It's a part of their identity, it should not be the central uh, core uh, component. So what could be left? So Israel is, a, is a, as you say, it's a problematic relationship because you have pride, you have a lot of of pride of this, uh, of this side, and the other side we have a lot of problem to show that you are part of it, so it's not easy to be a Jew in Europe. It's a, it's a big problem, and people don't like to be in dissonance. So when you are in dissonance, people go away from that in many ways, and they just, so there is an impact of, uh, of engagement, of Jewish engagement because of, uh, because of, uh, because of all this problem. Sure, if we could have a, a, a 
peace process in Israel it will be easier for many reasons. It will be easier for all the, the Jews in Europe, but it's not, a, it's not on control of, of the European Jews. I mean, they can make J. Cole, you know, they can make something, but, it, or they, but it's not a real serious actor. It's, it's something, they don't have control about their life. And, and so it's difficult to avoid it. So if we go back to what should be the European Jewish identity, and he should find a way to find a Jewish positive identity. If you want to propose something to the... We have a competition of identities. This is very basic. Today we live with identities like in Windows, you know, in computer. And we have, when you come with birthright, you know, Taglit in Israel, you have this Jewish identity is very central to your life. It's in the center of a computer. When you go back to Texas University, you just minimize your Jewish identity and go for socioeconomic and, and, and identities becoming central. So if, in this competition of identities, we have to find something which is very competitive. And if we don't find something which is relevant, which is something which is positive, we are not going to do it. And we see it. We see like Limud, we see a lot of projects of people feel something, a connection with Israeli people, Tikkun Olam, which is very important. People want to go together with, even with Israeli young people to Somalia or to other, other places. It's very central. I mean, something coming from a Jewish side, and it's not comp it should not be only Jewish concern. It should be I Jewish concern and I general concern at the same time. If you want to say something, well, it's, but it's in the making. We have to look for that. We have to think a lot. We have to bring people to discuss that together to find something will be a new identity, and, and we don't have it for a moment. If we are not able to do that, we lose a lot of people, and it's not because they are w bad people, because they are traitors, it's because we don't offer them something which is, they can live with. Um, maybe one last thing I will say. Okay, regarding the point you say that European Jews will feel European, what the when European will feel European, I completely agree. It's clear. I mean, the Jews, as, as Diana said at the first sentence, she said, the French Jews are very French. They comply all the time about the leaders. They like food. They have a lot of, you know, the, 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 the capital of gastronomy, of kosher gastronomy is Paris. You have a lot of food and, and kosher food and so on. And in England, you see the British people they are very proud of her majesty and they are very British. So the Jewish part is only a 10% of their identity. The most identity is, is local. And, and it's normal. It's normal. It's completely normal. So, the, what is common to all that? It's not something we have easy find to So this is this is what could happen anyway. And uh, but I'm I'm optimistic. I, I I remember Diana said that she's less optimistic than 20 years ago. I'm very optimistic. I think we see everywhere new uh, new thing, new spawns of identity interest. We see people who are looking for things and they want to do things. We have just to find the mechanism to support them, to have a, a program of, uh, of a, Jew, a Jewish initiative and to support these people, to make them a space when they express themselves and make it happen. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, there is, we could have gone on, but uh, there is a lesson here in a, in a few minutes, in, as it's, it is always at 15, um, uh, we have a lesson here. So let me conclude, first of all, by thanking our two speakers deeply for coming, for lecturing to us, for giving us their insight, for debating with us. And uh, I, we, of course, we have not reached a the conclusion. There might be a connection between all that you have said that Perhaps we're not going towards a Jewish-European identity, but we are going towards uh, a consolidation of the presence, and especially in the, cultural, in the cultural and intellectual impact the Jews can have. If I may sum up uh, uh, on that note, perhaps this is a summary that would be acceptable to all. And uh, this uh, debate and uh, this event only showed us that we really have to go next year to go on developing these issues. You are all invited to join us. Uh, we hope next year to hold our meetings in uh, the Diaspora Museum, as Dr. Feierberg said, with their exhibitions and movies, etc., and their staff. Uh, you are all invited. And thank you again for coming from abroad, and thank you for coming from Jerusalem.
Far away. Now, today it was far away. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and see you next year. Thank mm -hmm. you.